<clears throat> as I have been introduced in the de indeed my name on the slide here, uh, Christophe Partoon. So I will introduce uh, the actual webinar. So um, for uh, our member company. Um, so okay, let's start with the agenda of my part. Uh, so uh, three topics basically. So the advantages and benefits of Canix in general. Uh, two views that can be distinguished on Canix installations being the, the, the view on devices, the view on objects, which will allow me to explain to you Canix functions or the, well, the concept of Canix functions, which will then uh, allow me to introduce the actual topic of the day, um, visualization. So advantages and benefits. Uh, so here we see a uh, Canix installation, well, very uh, minimal, of course. So on the left side, we see sensors. On the right side, we see one actuator. And uh, the way this has been set up is, in, is as such that um, the, uh, the cabling is uh, really um, easy. Um, so this is in, in contrast to a conventional system where the wiring uh, takes it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort. Here, we don't have that. So the, um, the practical advantages of KNX are clear. The cabling is really easy. Therefore, we save a lot of time. And this makes the cabling aspect as such cheaper. Uh, this also gives us an enormous um, flexibility. So it is really easy to add more sensors and more actuators. Also, not to forget, also one last important aspect of, uh, well, in regards of practical advantages is that a KNX system has a complete separation between power, or let's say the, consume, the consumption part and the operation part, uh, because all these devices here operate upon 28 uh, volts. And even, of course, the uh, interfacing part or the, the, the push buttons here in, in this uh, example are uh, maximum five volt. In most of the cases, it's even lower uh, up to uh, down to 3.3 volt. Okay, practical advantages clear. Um, there are also some. Uh, there's also an automation aspect that comes with a Canix installation. There are definitely benefits there that can be derived from that, um, or that are the consequence of that. Uh, that's maybe a better way to express it. Uh, so, what are the automation aspects? Maybe first of all, well, uh, we can um, simulate presence. We um, have, thanks to automation, also presence detection. Uh, we can take into account astronomical time, like sunrise, sunset, etc. Uh, the availability of daylight can be taken into account. Alarm conditions um, can come from uh, basically anywhere, uh, like example given triggers from fire, fire alarm, H from, from an HVAC system. Um, timers, of, of course, so of course, not to forget. Uh, most uh, well-known example is probably the, the staircase timer. Uh, the result of that is that KNX all by all um, gives us a safe installation. Um, it also um, gives us convenience, and also not to forget, of course, uh, we will see an energy-efficient uh, system here. Okay, then uh, the Canix installation. So the two views that I have been uh, that I already mentioned before. So first of all, um, what we see in the Canix installation is, of course, the um, devices. So if this is one device, well, then this is one view of a Canix installation. So if you look at the collection of all these devices, uh, that is indeed one way to look at it, right? Um, but of course, uh, every device has at least one data point. So in this example, um, sorry, that should not appear here. Okay, that's better. Um, so the first device here has two data points. Um, if we then look at the other devices, then we see this. So we see, at, see, we see actually devices with data points. And this is actually um, also um, indirectly a way to see uh, an Canix installation in another way. And that is uh, this view here. So we can see indeed just data points. Um, these data points are in Canix called um, group objects or just short objects. Now, um, since we know devices, since we know objects, um, well, then um, I'm in a position now to go to the next uh, item or the another, uh, let's say, 
element or aspect of a CANX installation being group addresses, because a group address is actually a device independent virtual link between these objects. So example given, if I want to collect these three objects together within, if I, if I want to connect them together, better said, well, I can do so by means of a group address. This is group address yellow or group address one with one specific value, which is, uh, by the way, a 16-bit value. Another example could be blue, group address two, so yet another 16-bit um, value. So that's how we can indeed group um, um, objects together. And as you can see, this is indeed uh, device uh, independent. Okay, that, um, so that said, so uh, if we know now objects and we know uh, group addresses, well, it's now easy for me to explain to you KNX functions. And I'm immediately going to um, link it to the actual topic of, the, of today being uh, visualization. So suppose that um, we want to visualize an, a dimming system. Well, what kind of links do we need in such a system? Well, maybe first look at the devices that we need. We would need minimal a one-fold push button, push button, as you can see here, abbreviated, and one-fold dimming actuator and a visualization system, of course. So what do we need in regards of connections, in regards of group addresses? Well, there would be one group address that we will use for switching. So in order to exchange indeed one bit information between the push button and the dimming actuator. So this is obviously to switch on the lamp. And also it is linked to the visualization system. This can work in two directions. The visualization system as such uh, can be just in that way be informed about the status of, um, of the lamp um, as such. Uh, but it can also be used in order to control the lamp. So the, in other words, the visualization system can also trigger the dimming actuator here. Um, another link is a group address two. So green, this is used for relative dimming. This is actually a group address which is used in order to exchange four bit information. This four bit information uh, will allow the push button to indeed dim up or dim down the dimmable lamp that is connected to the dimming actuator. Then a third link is uh, blue, group address three, and this is a uh, group address which is used for exchanging 8-bit information, because with this 8-bit information, we can define, um, the let's say, we can um, switch the lamp to a specific uh, value percentage, so a specific position, let's say, uh, between zero and 100%, just with one command, could be example given, 60% or whatever you would like. Um, this is a link between the dimming actuator and the visualization system. So this is actually um, also, again, something that uh, a link that could work in two directions. So um, first direction from the dimming actuator to the visualization system so that the visualization system knows, okay, this lamp is at 60, at 70 or whatever percentage. Or the other way around where we just um, uh, drive um, or where we just put better set this lamp into a specific uh, to a specific value, um, a command sent uh, from the visualization system to the dimming actuator. Okay, then uh, one last slide for as as introduction is blinds plus uh, visualization. So again, let's have a look at the devices that we would minimal need. Well, there is again a one fold push button, a one fold blinds activator, of course, in this case, and also here, well, obviously, a visualization system. So what is the first link? This is a link, um, so group address one, in order to exchange move up down information, which is, which is one bit information. Um, and that is a link between the push button and the blinds activator. So that is the group address that will make this blind move. Then there is another link also required here, group address two, so green. This is uh, also one bit information. This is in order to make the movement that we just started before to make that stop 
or um, to um, go one step further in the direction that it that uh, in, in the in the direction that it was moving before. Um, so this is also information exchange between the push button and the blinds actuator. And then there is one more link here: uh, group address free. This is information um, exchange between the blinds actuator and the visualization system. This is 8-bit information. This is information that uh, is used. Uh, well, it depends on the direction, of course. If it's if it's from the blinds activator to the visualization system, then um, the visualization system is actually aware about the exact position of the blinds. Is this at uh, 50 percent, so uh, halfway, or is it uh, lower or high, uh, or above that position? Uh, so, well, that is information that you get in, uh, in in that direction via this group address, or the other way around, of course, when you when the visualization system sends information to the blinds activator. Well, then uh, this is information that will make the blind move to that specific uh, position as required by the user of the visualization system or by some script or uh, whatever uh, is uh, applied there. Well, that was actually uh, my part. I hope um, you um, can, uh, that, that this was enough for you in order to, uh, well, in order to, let's say, enjoy the rest of the show here. And uh, well, I uh, wish you much fun with the actual topic of the day uh, being visualization. And uh, before I do that, um, I first give the word to uh, my colleague back, Mr. Uh, Christian Stamm. All right. Thank you very much, Christoph. Now that we have basically covered the topic from the point of KNX Association, I am now opening basically the floor to the next presenter, Mr. Jose Maria Morcillo who also, as he showed in the chat box, is basically the host of the upcoming session. So, Jose Maria, you are unmuted, and I'm handing over the controls to you. Hello. I, hello, my name is Jose. Do you see my computer now? We see your screen, and we can also hear you. So, at this okay. point, I'm wishing you good luck with the presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Stan. Thank you. So, uh, as uh, my colleague Stan says, uh, my name is Jose. I'm from Domo Nature Company. Uh, we are we are a representative of, of Divus. And uh, we are very proud to show you today the main benefits of using a visualization system, like Divus, for example, together with a KNX installation. So, it's very important now to say that I will not go into the details of how to commission, how to program the main characteristics or features of the Divo system, but I will try to show you the main benefits of using a visualization system. So in general, okay? So because I think that it's it's a very important part of a Kinex installation, and uh, today I want to show you that, okay? So. Let's go just a couple of slides about Divus company. Divus is a global company uh, that is working very hard on the visualization systems. I'm very proud to say that is a, a reference in the visualization systems for home and building control, and it has several solutions for visualization coming from Kinex servers, going into uh, touch panels, intercoms, and so on, and we will see this later on. So, uh, Divus is, is located in South Tyrol, in now north of uh, Italy, and is uh, it's a, it's a mixed company between in Italian mind and, and German mind. So we we get the best of, of both worlds. So, this is a KNX server. This is a Divus KNX server. Of course, you can see here, but I want you to extrapolate. I want you to see more than here. When we use a KNX server, we have the chance to keep data, to save data, to analyze data as well, and to manage that data. That's the most important part of using a KNX server. Otherwise, using just a gateway, because some of our customers ask, okay, I can use a gateway. Yes, you can do that. But you will not have the chance of save any data and to control any data. You will just send telegrams to the bus, and you will just get telegrams for the, from the bus. That's all, okay? But we want to go one step further with a KNX server. So with a KNX server, we can control cooling, heating, energy, blinds, scenes, intercom, also the cameras as well, the security of the building, of the house, alarms, and so on. It is very important at this point 
if, as uh, my colleague uh, Christoph says, uh, he talks about um, scenes, energy management, uh, and some other automation aspects. It's very important that if you want to provide the most of a Kinex installation, do not stop and do not provide only switching, only blinds, and that's all, and dimming, that's all. We need to go one step further. And using a Kinex server, using visualization systems, we can get it. So this is the topology. We have, a again, in the middle, we have a Kinex server that is managing all the Kinex installation here. This is my Kinex installation. I hope you can see my uh, mouse here. So we have lights, we have blinds, we have everything in the in the KNX site. This is KNX site, okay? We have here uh, sensors, presence, everything. So we put everything into the KNX server. We manage that here. As I said before, we can manage the data and we can show the data in the clients. The clients are touch panels, my phone, iPhone, and I, uh, Android based phones as well, and everything. So, in this, this, this is like I like this slide uh, very much because uh, you can see the topo the real topology of our visualization system. And some of our customers say, "Okay, I want to um, control cameras. Can we control cameras with KNX?" Uh, no, you cannot control cameras with KNX because, but but what you can do is to show the image of the cameras in a visualization. For example, if the camera is connected to the for example, this is a switch, so I can show it into this touch screen, for example. Yes, I can do that. I can show it into this um, this touch panel, this my phone, for example. I can also uh, show the camera in my phone. So this touch panel will be showing the cameras, controlling the security system, and also controlling the lights from the Kinex side, okay? So this, this, this slide is very important because it shows how to connect all devices. So we have the Kinex wall, which is very big here, and is one of, one of the most important parts of the buildings. And we can connect the rest of the IP world, like IP cameras, IP devices as well, and so on, okay? So with that, we have the Kinex control in the installation, and we, we can have all these features. Like, for example, we, in case of Dboot, we have modules for data lock, Intercom, NFC, very, very interesting. SMS as well. We can have the intercom. So we can open the door. We can see who is on the door. We can integrate touch panels as clients here. Okay, and, and much more. How it works. So we have the KNX server on the left side and we have the client on the right side. In the standard mode, what we do is we call the Optima server Optima is the name of the software that Dibus is using, but you can use any KNX server, any visualization server. So you make a call to the server and it consults the database and it provides the information to the client. That's what we do. However, in Dibus, we go one step further. So we use cache. We use cache in the client and we use flash in the server. So what can we do with this? We can provide fast information. Today, we want to get as fast as possible the information in my phone. I want to press a light and I want suddenly the light to get on, to go on. And I want the feedback right away in my phone. So we can get it with KNX and we can get it with Dibus. Other uh, specific particularities of Optima. Optima, again, is the name of the software of the KNX server by Dibus. Uh, it uses Java as well, only for the intercom web module. Uh, we have the licensing module, one device, different licenses, for example. Several modules like intercom, data login, SMS, Modbus as well. Very interesting because we can uh, interact with Modbus devices. NFC, this is NFC tax. I put my phone on some table, for example, where, 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 a, tax, where a tag is located, and I can switch on a light or, or execute a, a scene or whatever. But why go for a touch panel? Right today, uh, wall mount touch panel. This is important. We have many customers that are asking. We, we need to defend this this position. Okay, why we need to to put a touch panel in the in the wall? Because today we have iPhones, we have iPads, very cheap. I know, very cheap. Samsung tablets, very. We can find a huge range in the market. 
Yes, that's correct. However, a touch panel, while mount touch panel, provides security, reliability, and continuous availability. This is very important. Why? Because it's not connected Wi-Fi. It's connected Wi with a TCP IP cable, with a net cable, CAT5, CAT6 cable, Ethernet, and it's connected 24-7. This is very important, so we cannot lose control of the house, of the building. So, the idea of the phone is to provide an extension, the extension of the touch panel, of the wall mount touch panel. So, we can have, for example, in one residential building, we can have one touch panel, and then we can have, we can have as, as many phones, as many iPads as you want. So, please consider the phone, consider the iPad, consider the Samsung tablet or whatever, as a complement of the wall mount touch panel. Why? Because you can move around the house, you can have your mobile phone, yeah, in your pocket, and you can control it also from outside the house. Outside the house, you can control the building from a from your touch panel, from your phone as well, yeah. But in the house, you will have the wall mount touch panel. So, for example, if someone is calling the door, the intercom system will need to ring, yeah. But we need a 40, uh, sorry, we need a 24-7 device connected every time, and it will be in the wall. If our phone has no battery, it gets it, it lost connection, we cannot control. We cannot, we will never be able to open the door. We need flexibility. We need to command any device, any Kinex device from anywhere, as I said before, also in, from inside the house and outside the house. Endless combination of functions and scenarios is huge, it's powerful what we can do with a key visualization. You cannot even imagine. We also have the customer have the chance to generate their own scenes. So he can do their own scenes. Building an energy. As uh, my colleague said before, this is a very important part in the KNX side, in the KNX world. So we have the management of the heating, the cooling, the energy and so on. The intercom, we can integrate the intercom, the door opener, we can integrate it into the visualization, into, into, the, into, the, yeah, into the touch panel, same touch panel for everything. Entertainment as well, the, we can control the audio, the video, we can integrate Sonos, for example, and other uh, multimedia devices. Security, we can integrate cameras as well, we can see the image from the camera, we can integrate any security system, in KNX or not KNX, we can integrate it, even if, for example, it's IP. So we need to make our installation easy. Simple, fast, and easy to commission. In a later slide, I will, slide, I will show you uh, how to export from the ETS and how to input again into our KNX server. We will see in live. So, some of the visualization functions, so what we can do, what can we do with a visualization system? So we can control lights, we can integrate the intercom, we can make energy management, not just to show how much I'm, am I consuming, how much power am I consuming, but also to control loads, for example. Security, scheduling, heating, cooling, scenarios, very important and powerful. Door and window contact, we can analyze, we can monitor every window in the house and also the NFC tax, for example, I talked before. Okay, let's see some example of, of what, what is a visualization. So, this is an example of a touch panel. You can see here, we have several, the control of the lights, but not just the control, but also the status. So, when we switch on the light, we can see the dimming here, we can see the dimming value, and we can also see the, that this is the real value from the light, coming from the light. So we can control the light and we get the status of the light, but not just on, off and dimming, but we can also control RGBs, for example. So nowadays are very common to have RGB, W, LED strips, for example, so we can control them from our um, touch panel. Intercom, we can integrate the intercom in the house, already existing intercom, we can integrate it into the touch panel. So one touch panel, only one touch panel for controlling everything in the house. Energy management. This is a very intuitive way to see how much I'm consuming. 
where the consumption is coming from, what time, so I can make decisions, for example. If I cannot monitor anything, I cannot make any decision. Optima, the Divus um, software, can also make the load control, and many of the visualization systems and the and the Kinex servers in the market can also provide load control. Security, we can integrate not just the camera, but also not just the, not not just the cameras, but also the the monitoring of every magnet or window in the house. Scheduling, we allow the customer to generate their own scenes, his own scenes. He can say, okay, at, at 8 a.m. I want these lights to switch on and I want it to be done on from Monday to Friday, for example. He can do it by himself. This is very, very functional. Why? Because this is the first time we are letting the customer to generate their own scenes and to program and to commission their own scenes. Heating and cooling both together in the same interface. Scenarios, scenarios. We can execute the scenarios so something is happening in a loop, for example, unless we press the stop button. We can also do that with a visualization system. Door and window contacts monitoring. As I said before, we can control every single window and door in the apartment, in the house, in the building. So we can make decisions as well. Smart ideas, this is, uh, as I said before, this is the NFC technology uh, coming from, from Samsung, for example. So if I put my phone on the table and there is an NFC tag, I can generate on a scene. So for example, good night or good morning. This is very useful. So in here, we can see some of the products coming from Divus, some of the visualization that we have in the market, some of the touch panels, okay? If you'd like to get further information about the product portfolio, the visualization options that we have in the market, please email me. You will see my email at the end of the presentation. This is just an example. So you can see that the touch zone, I will not go into details uh, uh, about the touch zone. I just want to show you that this is not, this is like a big phone in the world, always connected, as I said before. It's very important to be connected all the time. So I can control the multi-room, the energy, the intercom, the building, but also my email. I can have apps because, as I said, this is, an, this is a phone. I, I have access to the Android market. I have access to the Apple Store. Also this, this is uh, Windows. This one was Android, and this is uh, Windows-based, another model, Divo Superior, and the intercom. So we also have an uh, intercom solution from Divo. The heartbeat is the switching and all the technology that we need for the IP side. So if we want to connect our cameras and everything, the intercom and, and the KNX server, of course, we can use this, uh, this switch coming from Divus as well. So this is the set of devices that we can integrate in the home, not just the KNX control, the KNX server, as you can see here, with a KNX interface but also a tablet, also the touch, the wall mount, um, wall mount touch panel as well, big one or a small one, you decide. This is how it looks like. This is the Divus Optima. Optima, again I say, this is the software that Divus is using for visualization. Okay, so let's see an example of how to do, how to do the expo. So, we have my we have our project okay this is my project i i have already done a project an ets project okay and my project is finished this is very important once my project is finished i want to integrate into the visualization so i want to make a visualization to control my project which is working already so what i do is i here i have the topology as you can see i have here the group addresses you, you know this better than me. Okay, so these are the group objects, as my colleague in this talk said before, group objects, two in the same GA, so they can talk each other. So what I do is that I export the GA and I send commands to the GAs. So if I send a command 
uh, for example, from a push button coming from the visualization system, I will do the same as this touch panel is doing. For, uh, sorry, as this push button is doing, for example. This push button now is controlling the output one, okay? So what I have to do is to link the virtual button in the visualization system with group address 1600, and that's all. Because it's working already, because inside the, this GA, GA is group address, is this object coming from the actuator. So what is going to happen is the switch, the output one, will go on. So how to do that? We go to extras on ETS, and we export OPC. So we export to an OPC. We save. This is the name. I can say my project, for example. OK, and I save. OK, once I save, what I have to do is to go to, sorry, let me go here. To go to the interface, this one, for example, here, to the interface. This is the Dibus Optima. Dibus Optima is, uh, as I said before, is a Kinex server. So I can connect to the device over IP, over the, the browser. This is just a browser. So I can, I can, this is remote now. So this is real. This is a real device. It's not in the office. It's, it's in a real installation. So I can connect here. This is the menu on the left side. This is how it looks like. This is the menu. So I go to ETS import and I do the other way around. I do the import. So I choose the file here. I choose the file where I want and I import the file. Once I import the file, all my GAs, all my group addresses will be in the DVUS, in the Kinex server. It will be here, you can see here. This is lighting, this is on off. And I have here one light, for example, okay? So this is this address is 001. Okay, perfect. So I just need to link one button with this GA. And this button, I need to program this button to send bit one or bit zero or whatever I need. So as I said before, I will not go into details of how to program the, the, the Divus Optima. This is not the webinar for that. But I want to show you how how, how powerful this, this visualization can be. As I said before, this is a real installation, okay? This is remote now. So we can have here the graphs so we can monitor what's going on in the building. In this case, I'm monitoring the temperature here. So I have the temperature of two zones, for example, day zone and night zone here. I can also have a range of minimum and maximum as well. So once I have this information, this is real time, this, this is now. So once I have this information, I can make decisions. And this is the power of a Kinex server, of using a Kinex server. And this is your job now. You can make all the decisions you need and all you want to automate your house, to automate your client's house. So for example, here I can control the temperature. I can change the special mode, comfort, you know this, economy or just off. I can change from summer to winter. For example, I can also monitor, this is a graph to monitor the humidity and the CO2 level, the CO2 level. So I can have a monitoring here. It's, it's wonderful, the minimum and maximum value and also the average value. I can show here, I can monitor how, how many hours the air conditioning is working. Why do I need to do know? Why do I need to know that? Because if the air conditioning is working more than I don't know three thousand hours, five thousand, two thousand, I need to replace filters. So once this is happening, what I can do is to send an email to the customer saying that hey, you need to change the filter, for example. So this is this is why visualization is very useful because I can see in an intuitive way everything I need and all I want for the house. So, for example, I can go to a room, to the living room, for example, and I can also control that everything I want. So I just need in the in how to do that. In here, you can see this is a, this is a light now it's off. So I just need to link this virtual button with the GA with the group with the group address already existing in my ETS project with this GA, for example, here with sixteen zero zero. 
I just need to link it here and it will send on, off, or whatever I want. And this is so easy to do it. For example, I can also have RGB control, as I showed you before. So I can control the full RGB colors of an LED strip, for example, here. Not just by pressing a simple button, but also by using this, this palette color. Okay, so this is uh, how how a Dibus Kinex Eva uh, looks like. This is how a visualization looks like. In here, for example, I can also control the Sonos from the living room. So the Sonos is an IP, Sonos is IP device. I can integrate into the Kinex world. This is powerful. Why? Because also, I can also control everything from Sonos. I can also control everything in Sonos from a Kinex push button. So I can, have full control of the Sonos system from the Kinex side. And this is this is amazing. So going back to the presentation now. Okay. In here, as I said before, you have the OPC. You have to export OPC. I do it here so you can have it into the um into your uh, into your video that will be will be you can download it later on you do the export and then you do the import here okay and then what you have to do is as i said before you need to link the virtual buttons with the gas and this is how it looks like okay as i showed you before in this slide you can see some visualizations this is the administration side side of a, of a Kinex server and the, sorry, yes, the administration side and this is the visualization side. So you can also have 3D uh, controls. You can, you can put an image here, a picture here of the house, the real house, and you can control everything you want, okay? These are another kind of visualizations. You can have, this is real, you can have 3D, or you can have the image in the background and put here some virtual buttons that you can, you link to to GAs to ETS GAs real ETS GAs okay here as well for example so this is this is very nice very beautiful and important very intuitive for the customer so with a Kinex uh, Kinex control with a Kinex server what we do is we is that we take our installations to one step further. And I think that nowadays it's very important to not to provide just to switching, dimming, and blind control, but also to provide a full control of the house, to make our house smart, to, to have the possibility to make decisions according to what we can monitor in the house, and so on, okay? So that's the reason it's very important to use KNX servers and visualization systems in KNX. So, that's all from my side. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Here you have my, my contact details, my email. And uh, if you'd like to have more information about price list or product portfolio, or if you'd like to know if you can integrate some uh, some device into the visualization uh, from KNX or whatever, please email me. I'm very happy to help you, and I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose Maria. I have to say that was a very informative webinar. Also, like uh, many questions have been answered uh, in regards to visualization, but also I think the one question, why do we need uh, actually touch panels for when we actually have uh, nowadays iPads and so on? I think this question was very well uh, answered and uh, I think that uh, most of the people were able to learn something from this webinar. Nevertheless, you're still not off the hook. Now we're coming actually to the hard part, which is the questions and answers session that we have. And uh, I also can already see that the first question was uh, raised in the chat box. Um, maybe also for the audience, if you have any questions, now is the time to actually write them in the chat box and we will answer all the questions. So this webinar's concept is that we don't leave questions unanswered. And so feel free, don't be shy to write all the questions in the chat box. So I see like uh, that we 
have the first question if the switch is PoE. Well, Jose Maria, he already responded in the chat box. Uh, yes, it basically is PoE. Could you maybe explain what PoE means so that everybody understands actually what the question means? Yes, yes. Uh, many IP devices that we have in the market uh, can have the PoE uh, feature. That means that we can provide power over Ethernet. That, that, that's, what, that, that's what that means. Uh, power over Ethernet. So we just with with just one cable, one wire, from the switch to the IP device. That's all we need. We don't need to provide another cable for power and and so on. Okay, that is good to know. So next question: Should the camera has a specific uh, protocol, or the server is compatible with every kind of security camera? So uh, basically, I think that here we are talking about if the Security camera needs to have like a specific protocol, or does the server basically work with any kind of security camera? I just need to have an IP camera, not okay. analog, not analog, but IP camera. That's all. Good. So now, okay, I think that we also answered this question. It has to be an IP camera, uh, which is quite common, state of the art. Okay. Which device did you use to integrate the Sonos? Well, good question. In this case. Uh, I don't need to use any device. That's the good point. Why? Because as I said before in the topology, uh, Sonos is an IP device, and I have the Kinex world, and I have the IP world, and what happens is that the Kinex server can talk both worlds, both languages, IP and Kinex. So what it does is that the Kinex server sends IP commands to the IP devices, in this case to Sonos. So I don't need any extra device to control the sounds. I can do it from KNX server directly. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that answer. How many watts per port? Well, I I need to confirm this. So uh, this question was from Jose. Please send me an email, and I can send you back the data sheet of the uh, switch, the Debo switch. All right. Good. So by Basically stating the statement for the last question, I ask again in the round if there are still any questions, feedback, or like anything that you would like to contribute to this webinar. Oh, we have something regarding the cameras. So how do you need the feed? Okay, how do you know the feed? The feed as, as far as I think, no, no, please check me if I'm wrong. The feed is the URL address coming from the camera to check the image. So how do you know the address of the camera? How do you know the, 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 the HTTP address, log address? You need to talk to the camera's manufacturer. We don't know that. You need to talk to him. But 99.9% .9 of the cases, you can find this in the camera's manual. So no problem. Okay. Another very good question. Can you integrate the system with a photovoltaic system? And if yes, how? Yes, you can. And my question now is, what do you want to control from the photovoltaic system? Do you want to monitor the energy? Do you want to know something from there? In that case, you need to use KNX devices, like KNX binary inputs, KNX analog inputs, KNX um, energy management um, devices, for example but everything from KNX, and of course, then we can integrate it into the KNX server, in the KNX server, but yes, we can. Okay, maybe another question about also the intercom, is it also power over Ethernet? Yes, it is, yes, it is. Okay, what about security systems, grade two, to connect in CRA? Okay. I think this question is coming from Spain because CRA means uh, alarm um, central alarm uh, reception. So uh, you can do that. You can integrate that. However, you need to separate. System grade two is a um, specification from a specific country about some requirements that the devices need to have in order to be able to be part of the security house security system. Okay. So uh, you need you need to split. The split means okay. This is the the system. To, this is the the 
the security side, okay, is here, is working perfectly. And then what you do is you integrate. So you integrate the security, it can be system two, or sorry, grade two or whatever grade you need in your country. And then what you do is to integrate into the KNX side. So what you do is you monitor when it's happening, you can control things as well, and so on, but you need to separate. So this is grade two installation, which is, um, which is working perfectly and is um, it has all the functions it needs to have. And this is KNX side. So what you do is you integrate with binary input, with binary output, output, and so on. So if you have, if you would like, Borja, if you'd like to know more information about this, please email me because uh, this is specific for Spain. So I can, I can give you more information about this. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to get back to the cameras. Then with which camera protocols is the server compatible to use the ONVIF, that is the most common. That's a question. Okay. So, no, no, I'd like to, uh, actually, I need to confirm what on VIF means. But at the protocol, I can tell you that is uh, TCP IP. So, every camera, every IP camera with a Kinect server, server inside, and I can say 99.9% .9 of the IP cameras have an IP server, small IP server to provide the information. You can control them. You can monitor them. Sorry, not to control, but to monitor. You can see the image there. Okay. I hope that we have answered this question as well. Then, like, again, I would like to ask the audience if there are any further questions. Also, of course, you're free to give further feedback to Jose Maria. And uh, should there maybe be like a question coming up later, like after the webinar, what we uh, often experience, then of course you're free to send an email to Jose Maria directly, or you can also get back later to me when I send all the information uh, to um, the uh, to all the participants. Maybe getting back to the question that was just like asked here, I think that we are going a bit too specific right now in the topic of the cameras. Here I would maybe recommend that, uh, you know, that if you could maybe get directly in touch with uh, Jose Maria, and then you I can, can answer really this question. Ah, okay, good. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Well, no problem. Oh, so actually, Nuno, if you can see the camera from a web browser, like HTTP, whatever, 192.168, whatever. If you can see the camera from a browser, you can integrate into the Kinex server. That's the requirement. So even, you are right, that the URL is different from for, for any model, any brand has their own uh, URL. You are absolutely right. But if you can get that URL coming from the manufacturers and you can show it into the browser, that's all you need, nothing else. Okay, one more thing, sure. I think especially like in terms of cameras, uh, that is like a nice thing. Oh, I, uh, we have the question. There is like, we're talking about digital video recording. It's IP. Oh. Is it also supported? Okay, so you have a digital video recorder. You need to make sure, again, that the video recorder can provide a server function, so you can connect to the video recorder from a browser, regular browser, uh, by means of an IP, sorry, well, yes, IP and HTTP protocol. So what you do is you, that you can show the video recorder with the, the four cameras, 16 cameras or whatever, into the, uh, the screen of the Kinex server. So instead of having just one camera, what you provide, the information you are putting into the visualization is a, a matrix of four per three cameras, for example. So at, at the end is the same. You are showing an IP camera. You are showing an IP address. So whatever is in that IP address is showed into the visualization. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Um, maybe one last time. I would like to ask the audience because I still see that like since uh, most of the people are still here, I think that some people uh, would still like to have like some questions to be answered. So just in case your 
personal question has not been raised yet, feel free to ask it here right now. But also, as I said uh, later, if you would like to have a look at the webinar, we will upload it as soon as possible. Most likely it will happen tomorrow, and then you will also be informed once it has happened. Also, like the presentations will be available for download. And as you still can see here, there is the email address of Jose Maria. Feel free to send him an email with your questions. Also, of course, if you have questions to Christoph, who basically opened the webinar, feel free to also send that uh, these questions to me, which I uh, will later provide my email address, which I will later provide then in that email, also informing about the webinar recording. Good. Now that I think that I've basically said quite a lot uh, and I do not see any further questions, then I would like again to thank Jose Maria very much for this very nice presentation that we had in which we actually could really learn quite a lot about visualization and also some other questions that many others had. So thank you very much for this. Um, also, I would like to thank very much Christoph for the introduction and of course, last button please, all the participants, which actually helped to make this webinar again a huge success. So um, at this point, I would like to thank very much for everything. I would like to wish you a great day. And as it is common with our webinars, I would like to give again the last word to our presenter, to Jose Maria Murcio, who is then going to close this webinar. Thank you and goodbye. OK, thank you very, thank you very much, Christian. Thank you, Christoph. Uh, as my colleague said uh, before, you will find the presentation in, in, on YouTube, and also you can get an email uh, with this. Any anything you need about um, how to integrate this and so on, whatever into the Kinex Eva or how to combine these two worlds, right? So 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 different worlds, IP and Kinex. So please let me know. And just to 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 finish this presentation, I'd like to point out something that I've been saying during my webinar. Uh, uh, we are we are also Kinex, the Monedio is also a Kinex learning center. I'm a Kinex tutor and I always say say to my students, please do not provide, do not use Kinex only to switch on and switch off lights or to control blinds and finish. You don't need Kinex to do that. You don't need a full Kinex installation just to control one light or a set of lights just on off from a push button. You don't need an automation system. You can do that with electrical and conventional installations. So please get the most of your devices, get the most of the devices we have in the market, get the most of the Kinex devices we have in the market. We have more than 400 manufacturers providing amazing Kinex devices in, in, in this world, in this Kinex world. So please try to get the most of them. Visualizations, touch panels, uh, actuators, push buttons, so whatever you want. But try to get the most. Do not limit yourself, do not limit your installation just to on and off. So that's today my, my last my last word. Uh, again, thank you very much for, to KNX for this uh, opportunity to, to give you this presentation and um, anything you think I can be useful for you, I'm here to help you. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed and have a very nice rest of the day. Thank you.